If I was hunting retards, I won. You can twist here. Let's go ride. It was raining earlier today. Hopefully that's over with. It's about 20 degrees. Nice weather. Those are some dark clouds up there. That's why I'm gonna go any other way but that way. Monday, Monday, Monday. Oh, I got the windshield off, so I'm not used to the amount of wind yet. Might have to put it back on. So today let's talk a little bit about cruisers versus sport bikes. Cruisers are more for long distance driving. They generally don't have as much power as sports bikes or acceleration. This Raider S is in one of the power cruiser cl classifications, they call it. What that is, is uh, it's just got gobs of power. There's other bikes like it. Uh, Suzuki makes an M109R. Uh, Yamaha makes, oh good God, what is it called? Not the blaster, the... You have cruisers, which are all torque. Sport bikes, which are all horsepower. Cruiser, the V-twin cruiser, anyways, is a torque monster. They're designed to, to have a lot of torque, to move a lot of weight. Cruisers are generally much heavier than sport bikes. Take, for example, this is a 1900cc. The bike weighs about 900 pounds, approximate. You won't be turning this thing on a kickstand. No, you won't. You know, cruisers are just for more laid back distance. Now, to start off on a cruiser or a sport bike, we already, I already did a video on learner bikes. Um, I don't believe cruisers are peg forward. You know, like feed forward cruisers are the best to learn on. Now, cruisers, they're usually a bit less expensive than comparable uh, sport bikes. But you have to also take into account, this bike is a 1900cc, and there's no way it's going to hit 149 in first gear. It's not gonna happen, no matter what you do. Cruisers are nice, quiet engines. Well, not so much, you know, quiet, but they're very low revving. There's a lot of lugging with a cruiser. You don't generally, you know, wind a cruiser right up. Most of their RP, or the red lines are in the six, seven, eight thousand, whereas the sport bikes are much higher. Because the cruisers are like your old V8, your older V8 car, Parisians, your Firebirds, your Camaros. They didn't need a lot of gas to get moving. Whereas the sport bike is like your modern day Honda Civic. If it's manual, you need a lot of rev to get going. Cruisers are not as easy to stall as sport bikes or parallel engines or inline engines. They have more torque. There is a considerable amount more wind without that windshield. And I didn't think the windshield actually did that much on this bike other than be a bug deflector. You get a lot of older people that get it from their from their old V8 engine cars into a, a four-cylinder and they complain about them not moving. I've seen people jump off their cruisers and jump on their sport bikes and stall it. The dark clouds are staying away from me, which is good, because usually they chase me. Wow, it sounds like I'm coming down with a cold. Ah, well it's model vlog, when nobody can understand what you're saying. Great. Sport bikes, like I said, uh, require a lot of RPM. They're always yelling and screaming. Cruisers are more laid back, easy acceleration, doing the Bob Marley. Now, engine sizes. People think, whoa, you know, I'm gonna get a 600cc cruiser, a 500cc cruiser. That should be quick. I've seen the 600cc sport bikes. They're fast, not even comparable. No way, shape, or form are they confer comparable. Let's take my old bike, for example. 2010 Vulcan Special Edition. Beautiful bike. It's a 900cc, has 52 horsepower. That's 5'2 horsepower. Whereas Ninja is a 1000, 
it has over 160 some odd, 171 I believe. So as you can see, there's a huge difference in engines and engine sizes and, and ratings. Some places you can't try a bike out before you buy one or they're buying their first bike and buy a 600cc cruiser and it is going to be slow. I mean, you know, 900 cc's are the lowest lumen I would buy for a cruiser. Anything below that and you're just, you're smacking the end of the throttle all the time. And then there's the whole passenger aspect to it. Right, on a 900 cc, you know, with a 130 pound girlfriend on the back, at 120 kilometers an hour on the highway, if you need that extra amount of power to get out of the way fast when something goes wrong, it's barely there. Realistically, anything over 80, you don't have that snap acceleration. You always have the options of, of roll off the throttle, turn, brake, but on the odd time when you need that power to get out of there, if you got two people on the back, you know, then that's before you add any gear, like uh, saddlebags or anything like that. You, you just don't have the power. It's not available. Those are other things you want to consider. Also, you want to consider the fuel tank when you're looking at buying a cruiser. Because I didn't do it on this one and it is pissing me off every time I get on this thing. I mean, going to the gas station is now a sadistic ritual. This bike will get 190 to 200 kilometers on a full tank of gas. It has nothing to do with the size of the engine. Well, I mean, it's a large engine. But it has to do with the absolutely corny 9.5 liter tank. My 1983 XL100S holds 7 liters. That's a 100cc. I'm sure all my viewers are smart people, so you guys do the math. Now, let's talk about different features on cruisers. Or on, on some other regular bikes. You have belt drive. I prefer belt drive myself. Belts generally don't need any service. You can usually get about 60 or 70 thousand out of them before they even need an adjustment. I think they're just a better way to go. Shaft drive is nice, reliable, uh, definitely a quiet driving system. Personally, the way it, it, it pushes. You can feel the bike contort a little bit more than a belt. I don't know why, but you can. And they're generally a bit more sluggish. Chain. Chain is another option. I mean, that's the option that's been around forever. Chains are good, but they require the regular servicing. Those are all things to consider when you're buying your bike. Um, I like belt myself. I, I, I prefer belt. Most of the last couple cruisers I've had have all been belt. I think they're great. A lot of cruisers don't even, the manufacturers, if you walk into the showroom, don't have a clue as to how much horsepower their cruisers have. Horsepower in cruisers aren't a big concern. It's all about the torque. Now I know this, this bike has, I think it's 105 horsepower, but it's got over 100 foot-pounds of torque, which is mental for a bike. This is why I bought this bike, so when my back's broken and I want to get off the Ninja, I'll get onto this, and it still has power. Accessories for cruisers are usually more expensive than for sport bikes, I find. It's a nice day. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's the I'm Too Tired Roar. I gotta start getting some more sleep. Oh, come on, light. Come on, light. Come on, light. Look, they're racing. They're racing. They're racing. Hey, oh, there's running. He's got the cabin tracing. He's running. He's running. Hey, he's going for the gold. He's gonna win. Ah, the car goes wild. Oh, really? Come on now. This light is painful. Yeah. Ugh, my eyeballs are drying out. Blink, damn you. Let's see if we can find the Billy Ray Cyrus. Warp speed. Of course, I've got my night visor on, which isn't cool. Cruisers aren't as much fun to corner with. I mean, you can't bend them like a sport bike. You can get close, but other things about cruisers. Cruisers are generally cheaper to insure, unless you get this one, of course. So, this is Tuke and Twist. I'm out of here.